Hi, my name is R Blank, and I run SYB. And today I'm going to explain to you how cell phone radiation isn't actually regulated. And if you like these videos, please click to like and subscribe to this channel. There is a large and growing body of science demonstrating significant negative health effects from exposure to even relatively low levels of EMF radiation, like you would be exposed to from a cell phone. Serious effects like cancer and infertility. So how is it legal for cell phones to emit such harmful forces? That's what I'm going to answer for you in this video. To start, let's look at something called SAR. SAR stands for Specific Absorption Rate. SAR is intended to measure how much electromagnetic radiation is absorbed by your body. But there are several problems with SAR. Many of the biggest health risks from using cell phones come from extended use over many years. But SAR regulations are only designed to protect you from immediate damage from your phone. This is called the thermal effect. And it's when a device emits so much EMF that it actually heats your body, causes burns, damages DNA, and kills your cells. So that's why SAR regulations can't protect you from long-term health risks of cell phones. These regulations aren't even intended to try to protect you from those longer-term health risks. But because of how SAR regulations are designed and enforced, these laws don't even protect you from what they claim to protect you from. Here's why. In theory, SAR measures how much radiation your body absorbs from a cell phone except that theory is wrong. Because SAR doesn't actually measure how much radiation you absorb. SAR actually measures how much radiation is absorbed by a test dummy in a lab. And that test dummy approximates the body of a six foot two inch tall man that weighs 220 pounds. That's bigger than 97% of the world's population. This means that 97% of the population will absorb more radiation than these SAR tests show. Another problem with SAR is who actually does the testing. In the United States, SAR regulations are enforced by the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC. While the FCC sets the legal limits for SAR, the FCC doesn't actually test any phones. So who actually tests our cell phones for SAR? The manufacturer of the phone. That's like letting a child grade all his own tests. So it should not be surprising when we find that the manufacturers lie about SAR, like we saw in the PhoneGate scandal, when the French government measured hundreds of cell phones and found that 9 out of 10 emitted more radiation than the manufacturers claimed. Another critical variable in SAR testing is the location of the phone. Because the power of EMF radiation diminishes exponentially with distance. So if you hold the phone against your body, you absorb much more radiation than if you hold it even a few millimeters away. Many people use phones right against their heads or carry them in their pockets right against their bodies. It's how the phones are designed to be used. But that's not how they're tested. For example, Apple tests the iPhone SAR five millimeters away from the body. That makes a huge difference and makes the SAR look lower than what you actually absorb by using the device in the real world. Another problem is that SAR is a measurement of emissions from the cell phone radio card. And this cell phone connection is a big source of EMF from your phone. But it's not the only one. Most phones also have Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth, and GPS. Then there's Near Field Communication, or NFC, which is what your phone uses to make contactless payments. And increasingly, our phones also have wireless charging. So your phone is actually several separate sources of EMF radiation. But the official SAR value for your phone doesn't measure those. It only measures the cell phone connection. So this is another way that you absorb more radiation from your phone 
than the SAR rating would lead you to believe. And that leads to another fundamental flaw in how SAR is used to regulate radiation. SAR limits are designed to protect you against the health risks of using a cell phone. But with the explosion in wireless technology, people are increasingly exposed to EMF radiation from multiple sources simultaneously, such as when you use a cell phone in a public location in proximity to multiple other cell phones covered by over a dozen Wi-Fi networks in a room surrounded by electrical wiring in proximity to electrical appliances all of which are emitting additional EMF radiation. In today's world, we are literally never exposed to EMF from a single source. More often, it's dozens, or in cities, many hundreds of sources of EMF at once. These simultaneous exposures are called concurrent exposures. And SAR regulations don't protect you from concurrent exposures. Not at all. It's not only concurrent exposures that are unregulated, it's also cumulative exposures. Concurrent exposures are your exposures from multiple sources at the same time. Your cumulative exposure is the total amount of radiation you are exposed to over time. Safety regulations completely ignore this. To the FCC, using a cell phone for six hours a day, five days a week for 30 years has the same risk to your health as using it once for a five-minute call. There are many great consumer-grade EMF meters that you can buy to take measurements and learn what your exposures are. A decent meter can cost around $150. But you can't use these to measure SAR because these meters, the kind you can actually go out and buy, measure emissions, not absorption. A SAR measurement device costs tens of thousands of dollars, which means you aren't going to buy one, which means you can't verify cell phone manufacturers' SAR claims for yourself, which is precisely how scandals like PhoneGate happen. By design, SAR can only protect you against immediate severe damage from your cell phone, and not against longer-term health risks like cancer and infertility. But even given that massive limitation, because of how it is enforced, SAR regulations don't even protect you from what they claim to. SAR regulations are fundamentally flawed and don't ensure our safety with devices like cell phones. And that's why I say cell phones are unregulated. Because when you consider all these factors together, they aren't. Learn more about cell phone radiation and how to shield your body at shieldyourbody.com.